Moritz Kramer's head of sovereign ratings at Standard & Poor's. He joins us now live from Frankfurt. Moritz, good morning. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. What sort of debt restructuring are you talking about? I mean, do, does Greece need to wipe away more than 50% of its debts? Well, uh, I think I should uh, set the record a little bit straight. What you are referring is not a report that came out from Standard & Poor's, so we're not saying that uh, Greece needs to restructure. Sure. Uh, we rate uh, the debt of uh, the Hellenic Republic in the non-investment grade category for about a year now. It's now a double B-, minus, which clearly signals that the risks of an eventual restructuring have risen over the last year or two. However, um, if you look at historical default rates at a double B rating level, um, the base case would still be that they would not restructure. However, we understand, of course, that investors um, are increasingly interested in the question of what kind of recovery they could expect in the case that a restructuring would indeed happen after all. And there we have had an estimate out, as we do for all non-investment mm. grade sovereign issuers, um, since uh, last April, and our estimate is that um, a likely corridor for a haircut if the Greek debt would be uh, restructured um, is uh, somewhere between 50 and 70 percent. But um, we are not saying um, that the restructuring is inevitable. It's uh, probably too early to come to that conclusion. Can you put a percentage on the likelihood of restructuring in coming years? Well, the um, what I can do, though, and that's not a prediction, that's just a statement of empirical fact, is I can tell you what the default rates have been um, of sovereigns rated in the double B category. And, uh, and over a 10-year horizon, this was about sort of a quarter, slightly above a, a quarter of uh, sovereigns have then um, been in default in the decade um, after reaching the rating level of double B. So the, the majority actually yeah. has not. I think that's important to keep in mind. Moritz, what about debt maturity extension? Um, could that provide sufficient debt relief? Well, it, uh, it all depends on the details, and I cannot speculate on a plan that is not in existence yet. <clears throat> Clearly, the, uh, uh, extending the loan maturities would help um, because it would reduce the funding uh, needs of the Greek government. However, um, extending the, the maturities of a loan would, by our definition and probably most investors' definition, be, uh, be uh, the same as a default because you are not adhering to the contractual obligations that uh, the debtor has, um, has signed up to when the loan was sold. Um, therefore, unilaterally exchanging or extending uh, the maturities, uh, we would consider that to be tantamount to default. Moritz, I've got the, the Deputy Treasury Minister of Poland uh, sitting next to me. I'm going to be chatting to him <coughs> next. I know you released a note on Poland uh, in the last week or so, and uh, th there are no immediate issues with regards to its budget deficit. But what are your chief concerns when it comes to Poland? Well, I, I think that the word concern is, um, is, is maybe um, a bit of a strong term. The, uh, the outlook um, on, on, on the rating is stable, so we're not talking about any downgrades. What we have been commenting on is the decision to um, partly, uh, to a large extent actually, unwind the um, pension reform that has happened um, in, uh, in the late 1990s. Um, we understand that um, there is currently a certain uh, sort of period in the electoral calendar of Poland that makes it very difficult to come up with more fundamental measures, but we would think that this is a band-aid that we're seeing now um, and that following the elections uh, we would expect some more fundamental responses to the, uh, to the fiscal imbalances. But at the same time, I repeat, the outlook is stable. Yeah. It's not a, sort of a, an emergency situation that we would see. Moritz, thanks for joining us. We'll speak to you soon. Moritz Kramer there from Standard & Poor's.